Hello, my name is Bob Stancil. I am the director of the Bible Lands Museum in Sandy, Oregon, and I want to share with you some artifacts that relate to biblical history. That is one of my loves and one of my passions to look at what archaeologists have unearthed that can increase our understanding of the Bible. In this presentation, I'd like to talk about the ancient Egyptians. And we have a few things here that we'd like to discuss and bring to your attention. First of all, here upon the table, we have what is called the Apis Bull. The ancient Egyptians had many gods, and their gods sometimes had the heads of jackals or various other animals. However, they saw these as humans with animal features. But the only animal they worshipped as an animal was the ox or the bull, and it was for strength. They worshipped the apis bull. We see that it has been buried with pharaohs, the pharaoh standing in front of the apis bull. It has a crown upon its head. The apis bull, there would be one at a time. And any time that there was a lightning and thunderstorm, they would go out and immediately after the storm search for the new apis bull. Now the calf would have specialized markings upon it. Uh, I suppose the priests would look for the markings and determine that this would be the new apis bull. The old apis bull would be mummified and they have found at least 21 in one area where these bulls were preserved and mummified. What I want to bring your attention to is some similarities here with when the Israelites came in to the wilderness and they came to Mount Sinai. And we read there in Exodus that when Moses went up into Mount Sinai to receive the law, that there was lightnings and thunderings, and the children were afraid to approach the mountain, and they were told not to approach the mountain. And as Moses was up there approaching 40 days, they said, where is this Moses? And so we know the story that then they built the golden calf. And it's interesting that when there was the lightning and the thunderings that they choose to build this calf to worship it. There is a votive head that we have at the museum that dates to around 1200 BC that somewhat resembles one of these apis bulls. And this would have been found in probably the southern part of Syria. And you see bull-like nostrils here on the front, what is left of the crown and then the eyes upon the side there. And we know that when uh, Jeroboam became king of the northern ten tribes, that he placed two calves in Israel, one in Dan, and, which is northern Israel, where they would worship these bulls, these calves, so that they would not go down to Jerusalem to worship. Now I'd like to bring your attention to what is called the Ipwar Papyrus. You may or may not have ever heard of this. It is at the Royal Dutch Museum, and it's written by an Egyptian sage uh, whose name is Ipuer, I-P-U-W-E-R. There are some amazing parallels of this account to the biblical record of the Exodus and the plagues from Exodus chapter 7 through Exodus chapter 12. And if I could, I'd just like to read a few. And, and this is our facsimile of that papyrus. But let me read to you uh, some of these statements that are in this papyrus. Plague is throughout the land. Blood is everywhere. The river is blood. Men shrink from tasting. Human beings and thirst after water. That is our water. That is our happiness. What shall we do in the respect thereof? All is ruined. 
and other places, forsooth, grain has perished on every side. All animals, their hearts weep, cattle moan. Behold, the cattle are left to stray, and there is none to gather them. The land is without light. The children of princes are cast out into the streets. The prison is ruined. He who places his brother in the ground is everywhere. It is groaning throughout the land mingled with lamentations. Behold, the fire is mounted up on high. Its burning goes forth against the enemies of the land. And on it goes. When asked about this papyrus, the curator of the Royal Dutch Museum agreed that this does sound similar to the plagues of Egypt. But he says the dates are off, uh, the dates that they give this papyrus. However, in looking at this, the parallels are really remarkable. Now I'd like to look at the Egyptian method of embalming. As we look here, this is an Egyptian bead mask that would, was found on an Egyptian sarcophagus. The common people could not afford, of course, to have themselves buried in golden sarcophaguses as the pharaohs were. And so they would use this inexpensive fiance material to make beads out of and make masks that would resemble them. And we, we see this remarkable bead mask and Egyptian embalming had highs and lows over the centuries and probably was at its peak during the time of Ramses and that time period. It waned and was not as good later on. The Egyptians never wrote down on how they embalmed the human body. We do know that they had the canopic jars and it's been figured out how they removed the brains. But much of what is known about the embalming process was discovered through the writings of the Greek historian Herodotus. And from that, Dr. Bob Breyer, a professor of Egyptology, in 1994 was allowed with his colleague to mummify a human body. In their research, what they discovered in the mummification process that it took 40 days for the first initial phase, and then another 30 days for the second phase. Why is this remarkable? Because we look when Jacob, Israel, dies, that Joseph has him embalmed in the way of the Egyptians. And there is a 40-day period mentioned there in the scripture. And then there is another 30 days that they take Jacob's body to the land of the promised land. And they bury him there. We know that the Egyptians had a rule that human body had to be put into the ground on or by the 70th, 70th day. This is remarkable because it shows the person writing the account in Exodus had to have firsthand knowledge of how the Egyptians embalmed. Now we would like to take a look at the embalming process in the first century. And we're gonna look behind me here. We move to the first century and we see portraits of Romans that were buried in Egypt. The Romans that lived in the area loved the way that the Egyptians embalmed bodies. And so they would have themselves embalmed and they would have their paintings painted upon their coffins or we'd say caskets. And we see here that on their, these caskets, they have these beautiful portraits. Now, if we look at these, we see 
women who have jewelry. This woman's name is Aileen. She was around age 35 when she passed away. She had two children buried with her in her tomb. And then this lady, Demos. And again, look at the hair and the jewelry upon her. And these were painted on the wood that surrounded the body on the outside. And then here we have a woman. And this woman is Jewish. And next to her is what the archaeologist that discovered the find deemed the jewelry girl because of the amount of braiding and jewelry that she has on her body. But if you notice the contrast here between the Jewish lady, her hair is not braided, no jewelry, and it's just an interesting thing to note. And we are looking back at a time period when the apostles would have been alive upon the earth, and this is how people looked. Now next to them, we go over here, and this is a priest of Seraphus. Seraphus was a combination of an Egyptian god and a Greek god and turned more or less into a hybrid god. And we see this priest has a beard uh, and tries to look similar to the image of Seraphus that was worshipped. We know he was a priest because the star that is upon his uh, head on the band up there. And then next to him, we have a Roman soldier. And we know that he is a Roman soldier here because of the strap that would have held his gladius sword. Now as we go back over here, we see a lady, and we know that this lady, Hiramon, was a school teacher. And we see her name is written upon the sarcophagus. And many of these we know some stories about. But then there are those that we don't know hardly anything. We don't know their names or anything about them. This young man, who lived between 100 and 150 AD, had been a slave and had recently gotten his freedom just before he passed away. And we see the painting and, and the eyes in the young man there. And then here is another boy that lived uh, around the same time period. This man, Diogenes, was a flute player there in Egypt. And then over here, Demetrius, who lived around, uh, died around 95 to 100 AD, was a type of businessman. He was age 59 when he died. His body is at the Brooklyn Museum in Brooklyn, New York. And they did a CT scan on him 10, 15 years ago and discovered that he suffered from gallstones, which was interesting. So his body and his sarcophagus is there at the Brooklyn Museum. Most of these went into private collections because they were looking for gold objects, uh, the archeologist and bounty, but all they found were mummified bodies and these wonderful paintings that have been saved so we can look back in time.